Hey everyone, Marius Gajdzik here and today I will show you how I achieved this look. With color grading in my latest video, The Cinematic Portrait with Martina, where I used film looks built in into the DaVinci Resolve. However, to use them properly, you need to use specific settings that some people might not know about. So let's start. Okay, so as you can see, we are in color page in DaVinci Resolve and we first need to set up our timeline. And as I'm using Mac and I'm gonna be exporting to YouTube and QuickTime, I'm gonna use the Rec. 709A uh, with the DaVinci YRGB color manage workflow. Uh, but you can also use DaVinci YRGB with the Rec. 709 on a Mac and that's gonna work for YouTube and QuickTime. Uh, but if you're going to do color grading for broadcast, you're going to have to use Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 and you're going to have to have a um, screen that's going to show you that and you're going to have to use a separate graphics card for that uh, with the Mac so you can get the color out of the graphic card without the color management of the Mac. So I'm going to use Rec. 709 over here and that's how we're gonna do that. But if you're gonna use that with the DaVinci YRGB without the color manage uh, workflow, you're gonna have to transfer your footage first to the Rec. 709 and then use the CST I'm gonna show you over here. Uh, so you're gonna have to do that differently a little bit, but we're gonna use the color manage workflow over here. So as you can see, we have our node tree over here and I already pre-labeled them. So it's easier for me to go along and easier for me to show you the node tree straight away. So we're gonna have our noise reduction over here, the sharpening primaries. Uh, so that's gonna uh, be doing on these wheels. Uh, we're gonna add some glow, add some halation. Uh, we're gonna have a qualifier for skin and we're gonna use the CST to uh, transfer our footage to Cineon Lock, and then we're gonna do film print emulation over here and our film grain on the last note. So the first thing we're gonna do is transfer our lock footage with the color management to the Rec. 709. And we're gonna do that with right-clicking on this clip over here and putting the input color space to s gamut Free Cine s lock Free because that's recorded on the Sony FX3 and with that s lock Free with s gamut Free Cine. So as you can see, that's converted to Rec. 709 now and we're gonna do our CST, which we can find in effects. And if we have all effects, we're gonna have to find it on the long list of the effects, but we can also add them to favorites and I've done that. So I have all the favorite effects accessible and easier to find. So we're gonna drag that color space transform and put it on our node with the CST. And in that CST, we're gonna transform from the Rec. 709 and Rec. 709A, because that's what we're working on, to the Rec. 709 and Cineon Lock. Cineon Film Lock, so that's what we're gonna use. So we have the Cineon Film Lock right now, and that's what we need for those looks that you can find in LUTs, in film looks. And you have 12 LUTs over here. And six of them are for the P3 gamut. And six of them are for Rec. 709. And we're going to want to use that Rec. 709 ones today. And you're going to want to use the P3 if you're working in P3 color space, but we're working in Rec. 709. So we're going to grab our LAT, Rec. 709, Fujifilm 3513DI D55, because that's the one we're going to use. And we're going to drag it to the FPE, so Film Print Emulation. So as you can see, that's our Rec. 709 and that's our Film Print Emulation. And that's going to be our base for that grade. So we are in a good place over here with that uh, CST to Rec. 709 uh, Cine Unlock and then Film Print Emulation with that LUT over here. 
So now we're gonna do sharpening first. I'm usually sharpening my S-Log footage uh, with the sharpening tool over here. And I'm just gonna put a 47 over here because that's what I'm gonna like to use on that footage. Uh, so that's gonna be our first thing. Uh, we're not gonna use the noise reduction over here, but it's good to have that note over here ready for that. And we're gonna move straight to our uh, primaries. And in our primaries, we're gonna do first uh, contrast. I like the colors we have over here right now, so we're just gonna do our contrast. So I'm gonna take our lift and I'm gonna lower it so we have our blacks uh, black. I'm gonna lower my gain as well so it doesn't clip. And I'm gonna lower my gamma because I want that footage to have a lot of contrast. So that's gonna be our primaries uh, for now. And with the primaries, I also want to do a little bit of color separation. So I'm going to take my gain and I'm going to move it towards green and blue or like teal or something like that. Um, that's quite extreme, but you're going to see that if I move the lift in the other direction, that's going to look pretty nice. And I want to move my gain even more into green because uh, I want to have that like teal and orange sort of look um so that's our that's gonna be our primaries so as you can see that's our log that's our primaries that's maybe a little bit too much and maybe i'm just gonna add a little bit warm to the to the lift uh and i'm liking what i'm seeing right now so i'm just gonna leave it over there and we're gonna move along to our glow and i'm gonna put our glow effect from uh, our effects to the glow note. And as you can see, we have the glow on the brightest parts of the image. And I'm gonna want to switch that over here to shiny regions so I can match that regions to what I want to be affecting. So the glow affects the skin a little bit as well. So if I move that to that over here, you can see that we're going to have that as a shiny region as well. And we're going to switch that back to the glowing image. And you can see that's very, very different from what we had before. I want to decrease the saturation for sure. I want to bring the gain of that filter over here down as well. And I want to move the gamma as well. So it's not as much of a change. I like it how it is right now. And the second thing we're gonna add is the halation. So we're gonna drag our effect from the effects tab and we're gonna add that halation. And as you can see, that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna dial it down. Just gonna zoom into the face so I can see it better. And I'm gonna move the threshold up so it's affecting only a little bit. And I like where it is right now. I'm not going to change any other things. Uh, this is how it looks when you see the glow alone. So that's not too much affecting the skin. So now we are going to do our qualifier on the skin. And we're just going to select the skin and we're going to see that effect over here. Uh, if we press over here, it's going to show us what we are selecting. So we're going to do that and then we want to move it to where it works the best for us. So it selects only the parts that we want to select like this. Obviously you can do it better if you are working on that yourself. I'm just going to do a quick qualifier and I'm pretty happy where that is. And I'm going to blur radius a little bit and I'm going to denoise it a little bit so we don't get any weird things. It affects a little bit over here, but I don't mind that over here right now because uh, otherwise that's going to be difficult to do, but I don't want to make that too complicated in this tutorial. So we are just going to leave it there. And as you can see, our face is selected. Uh, maybe we can move that a little bit towards that and then this and our face is selected a little bit of hair. And we can now, with this node, move that skin a little bit to the pinker uh, because I didn't like how it, yellow it was. So now it's a little bit more pink and I like that color much more. 
And also I'm going to decrease the mid details so the skin is softer. So it's like nice, soft, pinkish tone. And I like that. And I like how that looks. And that's going to translate to everything. And it doesn't really affect that much of this part that was selected to I don't really mind that over here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so we have our look, we have our qualifier, we have our CSD, we have our film print, and then we're going to add the film grain as well. And again, that's going to be in the effects. And we're going to drag that film grain over here and choose 60 millimeters archival. And I'm going to increase the opacity because I want it to be very visible over here. And I'm going to increase the grain size as well. So it's this visible so as you can see it's pretty nice grain and i like that it's really looking like film with that halation with that glow and with that grain i really like that look and that's the look i wanted to achieve so if we look at our uh, gallery and if we look at different look uh we can see that the look i had before was a little bit different so i'm gonna Again, go to our primaries and try to match it a little bit better. So now you can see that we got to our look this way and you can see that this is our Rec 709 and this is our look. And I like the overall mood of the footage. It looks really retro, look really film-like uh, with that grain, with that glow and with that halation over here and the colors. I like that look a lot. I hope you find this information useful and if you enjoyed this video please leave it a like, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos similar to this one. And also please let me know in the comments what you think about this look and if you'd like more videos about color grading. This is everything in this video, thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye!